All praise, all glory belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the heavens and the earth and that which is between them. May his infinite, endless peace and blessings be upon the leader of creation, the jewel of creation, the purpose of creation, the beloved to Allah, the nearest to Allah, the dearest to Allah, none other than Sayyiduna Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In order for a, purpose, for a person to understand destruction, a person has to understand his purpose of existence. If that person does not understand the purpose of his creation, then you can give as many talks on weapons of mass destruction, it will not make a difference to him. Allah Almighty lays a foundation for the believers in the Quran al Karim. He says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I did not create the humans. I did not create the jinns. And I did not create the humans. But to worship me. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I did not create the jinn and the humans, but to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the fact of the matter is, we as insan, we as unas, we as creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this word that is linked to us, insan, it comes from a word with the root letters noon, seen and ya which means nasiya to forget. So insan and nisyan go hand in hand. Insan forgets. Allah Almighty constantly sends Anbiya alayhim salam to the humankind for them to be reminded that the purpose, the reason of your creation is so that you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing else. But we live in an age which is full of distractions. One of the main distractions that we have in our day and age is a smartphone, which actually makes people more stupid, and we all carry one of them in our pockets. But we know the people who made these phones, they themselves didn't give those phones to their own children. For example, Steve Jobs, he made the iPhone. It is documented that when people went to the house of Steve Jobs in 2010 and they questioned him, they interviewed Steve Jobs and they asked that I bet you have given the latest phones to your children. You have made a limited edition phone for your child. And Steve Jobs, he said, no. Rather on our dining table, we talk about history. We talk about maths. And we have limited the internet in our house. Allahu Akbar, these are the people who are not distracted from the purpose. The purpose is dunyavi. The purpose is something from the dunya, to gain the dunya. And Allah Almighty reminds us in the Quran al karim that your purpose is not the dunya. So don't be distracted in the dunya. Though you will live in this dunya, but your aim and purpose is the akhirah. Your aim and purpose is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we will have this young child who will sit on Facebook hours on end. He will be on Facebook, killing time. No goal, no purpose, no intention of learning, no intention of memorizing, no intention of studying history from himself. Not that history that is forced down his throat in school but rather something that he wants to do himself. Because on our tables, when we sit at home with our children, how many times have we spoken to our children and mentioned to them people of purpose, people who were not distracted? Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu after the passing away of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr faced a lot of difficulty, but he was not distracted from the mission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Sayyiduna Umar al-Faruq radiyallahu an was not distracted from the mission that Abu Bakr left him with. Sayyiduna Uthman ibn Affan was not distracted with that which Sayyiduna Umar left him with. Or Sayyiduna Ali ibn Abi Talib karramallahu wajhahu al-kareem. Or Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. Or any of the great leaders of Islam, they were not distracted from the purpose. And the purpose is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is your Facebook. This is my time. This is my time to learn. A, a, a person whose mind is clouded, who is distracted from the real purpose. He is sitting on Netflix. There are people who don't come out of their houses days and weeks. Allahu Akbar. When you ask them, brother, why don't you come out of your house? Oh, I was too busy watching Top Boy. I was too busy watching Top Boy, binge watching. I was too busy watching Power. I was too busy watching... No one says Aturul anymore. I think that time's... We're a bit past that time now. Or Usman or any of them. But I'm too busy watching these people. I have no time to come to the masjid. Wallah, I'm not making this up. You, he is some youngsters. But it's... Helping me against evil. This is what they say. If that was the case, then why didn't, why didn't the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, pray your salawat in your house? And how many salawat are prayed in the house? These are weapons of mass destruction. This is why they've given you that. What did they say? Give them bread and give them circuses. They will never revolt. Give them bread and give them circuses as they do. These football games, cricket games, rugby games, my, traveling to Saudi Arabia. We used to travel to Arabia for Umrah. People travel to Arabia now because they want to watch a boxing match. They want to watch a UFC match. So they've given us that and we've accepted it with our hands open, with our arms open, open arms. Bring it to me. I love to enjoy myself. But Allah Almighty did not say to you that you cannot enjoy yourself. Allah Almighty said, do not be distracted from the purpose. The purpose was always Allah Almighty. Or you have youngsters on PlayStations. People say, you know, autism is a disease that many young children are born with. And I pray that they get better and they get well, inshallah, over time. But some people, they make themselves autistic by not socializing with anyone else. They bar themselves off with anybody else. They just don't want to talk to anybody because they're either too busy on their fake live on Instagram or they're too busy scrolling on TikTok or YouTube or Instagram like I mentioned. And they don't know where they are. They don't know why they were created. They don't know who their leaders are. Nothing. It doesn't mean anything to them. What comes we accept what doesn't come our way, we leave. This is what they say. But Allah Almighty, He made this life for us so that we can go out and search. So that we can find our way to Allah Almighty. The way of Marifa. And the way of Marifa cannot be attained just in your rooms. And these people, the leaders that we see, our Muslim leaders, mashaAllah, from the Ummah, the people of purpose, the people who were not distracted, they did not just live in their rooms. They went out and they studied the tradition. They went out and they left that which was attractive to them. Whims and desires. And they left that and they said, you know what? I'm going to do something which will be a better means for me in this dunya. But when I leave this dunya, my name will remain here in the dunya when I make my way to the akhirah. Allahu Akbar. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal amongst those people. He's studying with his teacher. And a elephant goes by all the children they go and they chase they're distracted they go and chase this elephant because they hadn't seen an elephant before they hadn't seen the ears of an elephant the trunk of an elephant so they all start to chase this elephant because they want to see it which is fine but the teacher asks Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal oh Ahmad why didn't you go and chase the elephant why don't you want to go and see the elephant and Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal said, we weren't created for looking at these things and being distracted by these things. We were created to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once we know Allah Almighty, the dunya is in your hand. Everything is there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this way 
to understand him subhanahu wa ta'ala but he has also placed his distractions in our way whether we choose Allah or will we choose the way of the Satan or the, or the way of the distraction. The second foremost distraction in our lives is money. Money to a certain level is fine but when we go past that level, the surplus level, then becomes greed because I want to compete with other people. I want next man to think, look at him, look at the life he lives, look at the money that he earns. So in the sight of other people, I look better. I look greater. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran? Innama amwalukum wa awladukum fitna. Allah Almighty said, your mal, your wealth and your children are a fitna. This verse was recited when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama was sitting on the mimbar in Masjid al-Nabawi and Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein walked into the masjid and they fell over as they were coming towards the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam got off the mimbar and he went to Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein and he carried them both and he sat back down on the mimbar and he said, Innama amwalukum wa awladukum fitna that your wealth and your children are a fitna. Subhanallah. This is the love of the Messenger of Allah for Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. But why does Allah Almighty mention wealth before he mentions children? Because wealth, when it's earned to that level, it will allow you to do things which are against the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which are against the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask yourselves, my brothers, when you have zero pounds in your pocket, when you have nothing in your pocket, do you have a haram thought in your mind? You will say no. When you have money in your pocket, you, you can do anything you want. You can do anything you want. Whatever that may be, you can use that. And the reason Allah Almighty mentions that is, that is used for the disobedience for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when wealth gets to that level. And then Allah Almighty mentions that children are a means or are trials from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but they are a lesser trial than wealth is. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Inna li kulli ummatin fitna wa fitna tu ummatil mal Every ummah, every nation had a fitna, had a trial and the trial of my nation is wealth, is mal, is money. This is why he said in a hadith mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, Ya'ti ala nasi zamanun. A time will come upon people. La yubali al-maru ma akhaza minhu. A man will not care where he earned his money from. Yani amil halali am min al-haram. Has he earned that money from halal means or haram means? He doesn't care. It doesn't bother him. And then that wealth that he earns, hadith mentioned in Sayyid al-Bukhari, that he earns from halal or haram means, he then feeds his children with that haram means of money. Then he wishes that those children are people of la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. How can that be? Because his wealth is doubtful. His money is doubtful. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has already told him, that a time has come upon him where he doesn't care where his money has come from. We need to be aware of that time, my brothers. We need to make sure our money, our wealth that is entering our pockets and then entering our stomachs is halal and 100% halal. We must make this intention today, inshallah ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the greed of a person will reach that level that will be distracted to that level. He said, Lo anna li ibn Adama wadiyan min dahab. That if the son of Adam alayhi salam had a valley of gold, ahabba an yakuna lahu wadiyan, he would only love to have two valleys of gold. Lain yam la afahu illa turab. Nothing shall fill his mouth other than the dust that will be placed in his mouth when he enters his qabr. Allahu Akbar. Nothing shall fill our mouths, my brothers. Nothing other than the dust that will be placed in our mouths when we enter the qabr. This is the fitna of the mal. This is the fitna, this is the love of money that has entered our hearts. 
that we yearn for, that we live for. Subhanallah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he informed the companions that the day of judgment will come and people are distracted to that level. That, وَأَنْتَرَ الْخُفَاتَ الْأُرَاتَ رِيَاءَ الشَّاءِ يَتَتَاوَلُونَ فِي الْبُنْيَانِ When he's earned that much money, what will he do? He will build houses and this person, when we looked at him from an earlier stage in his life, he was barefooted shepherd. And today he competes in making the biggest buildings in the world. You don't need to look far. Oh, my brothers from Dadial, my brothers from Chikswari, my brothers from Mirpur. People claiming on in this country, making mansions in Pakistan. They make those mansions in Pakistan where donkeys and cows reside within them. Cows and donkeys are living in those houses that they rent out to people and they pay those people. They live in this country. Why don't you put that money towards the education of your children? And if you have, mashaAllah, but who has that much amount of money that he's getting his children educated privately, we don't think like that. As Muslims, we don't think like that. We have to think, what's Chaudhary Sahib going to say? What's Raja Sahib going to say? Wow, this man, he went to England at the age of eight, nine. He hasn't been able to make a quote in Pakistan. What do you do in this country? This man has made such a big quote and what have you been doing in England for the last 50 years of your life? This man is distracting you from the cause that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought you into this dunya. But when they look at a fakir, when they look at a man who has humbled himself, he ain't driving around GMCs. He's not driving around in big cars. He lives a humble life. He lives an Aji's life. His means are from day to day. He doesn't think about the future to that level. And that man is off the books. We don't care about him. We don't care about him because he's not a man who competes. He's not a competitor. Yes, we are competitors. Every one of you sitting here is a competitor for good. He wants goodness for himself and he wants goodness for his children. But the goodness has to be here, my brothers. You can't be from those people that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that these are those people that are signs of the Day of Judgment. Rijalun la tulhihim bay'un tijaratun wa la bay'un an dhikrillah wa iqami salah wa ita'i zakah The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Men, men, you lot, men, masha'Allah ta'ala. La tulhihim, nothing distracts them. Yani commerce and sales from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They establish their prayer and they give their zakah. That's what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is talking about from the Quran, is telling the Messenger of Allah to remind the believers. And then Allah Almighty says, Ya ayyuhal amanu, la tulhikum awladuk amwalukum wa la awladukum an dhikrillah. O oh, you who believe, O oh, believers, do not let your wealth and your children distract you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ Whosoever allows that to happen, then he is a loser. That's what Allah Almighty is saying. I'm not saying that Allah is saying that in the Quran, that whosoever lets his wealth and his children distract him from the remembrance of Allah, then he is a loser. You go out six, five in the morning to earn money for your children, for your wife, for your family, for those that, their dependents that you've left in your native countries. But my brother, have you read your Zuhar prayer? Did you pray your Fajr prayer? Firstly, did you pray your Fajr prayer? Did you pray your Zuhar prayer whilst you were on that taxi run? Did you pray your Zuhar Salah? Or if you were in the office, did you pray your Zuhar Salah? Did you pray your Asr Salah? Did you pray your Maghrib Salah? Did you pray your Isha Salah? If you did, you are not from the Khasirun. You are not from the losers. You are from the winners. You are from those who is a winner. And you are not from those who keeps his wealth in his pockets and he doesn't give zakat. That's what Allah Almighty is saying. You have prayed your prayer and when that time came of the year, you gave your zakat. You are a winner. Masha Allah Ta'ala, you weren't distracted from the cause of Allah Almighty. You were there and your purpose, you knew your purpose. That my purpose in this dunya is to know Allah. Because I know one day I will face Allah Almighty and that time is close. 
as a second goes by. And kullu nafasin min anfasik juhratun la kimata lahu wa idha fata fala awdata lahu hujjatul islam. Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah said that these breaths are a priceless treasure. When they exit your mouth, they will never come back. So treasure these priceless moments that you have in your life in the remembrance of Allah Almighty. That's where your spoon is, my brothers. Wallahi, that's where your peace is. That's where your tranquility is. That's where everything is. But we have forgotten our purposes. Ask that man. Wallahi, I tell you this with proofs. People come and talk. They ask the Imam. They talk. We hear about this. That when people, they earn, an Imam earns 200 pounds a week. And then you have a man who earns 1,200 pounds a week. Where is, how is this man living? Who is an Imam? He is providing for his family. He has a car to run. He has bills to pay mortgage to give everything and then you have this man no spoon no salah you know ragos is ragos life yani man he goes home wife's giving him all of that he's basically holding gun but he's earning 1200 pounds a week what is the point of that where he has forgotten the remembrance of allah where he has forgotten to give zakah and look at these people look at money mayweather although his zakah is, doesn't apply for him but these people they don't give taxes why because when that greed enters the stomach their purpose is distracted. They are distracted from their main purpose. Allah Almighty give them understanding of Islam and they understand this way as well and that these are the people who are winners. Each and every one of you sitting before myself is a winner because you pray your prayer, inshallah, ameen, and you give your zakat. That's it. That's all we want, my brothers. And these other things are weapons of mass destruction. Wa akulu qawli hadha. Astaghfirullahi li wa lakum. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina.